Hi, I'm Kevin Richardson, and I'd like to talk a little bit today about genetics. I think that in a lot of ways, genetics are perhaps one of the main drawbacks to a lot of people achieving their fitness goals. And by saying that, I think that people tend to look today at social media. Back in my times, we'd look at the magazines and see some truly outstanding physiques and compare ourselves to those physiques and tell ourselves that it would be impossible for us, given where we are starting out, to ever get there. The sad part is that genetics are kind of like, to, to quote Forrest Gump, a box of chocolates and that you never really know what you're going to get until you open the box. And the problem is that opening that box requires years and years and years of training and years of eating properly to really see what your potential is. I think there are two main problems. Comparison is number one, which is always a mortal enemy of any type of peace and, and sense of self-esteem because you can't compare yourself to anyone else. You may have outstanding genetics, but that outstanding genetics that you have may not necessarily make you look like the person who you look up to in the fitness industry. But at the same time, you may have a phenomenal body waiting for the world to see, that no one has had a chance to see, that the very person who you look up to may one day look at and say, wow, he or she looks amazing, I'd love to look like them. But in order for that to happen, you have to believe in yourself. We live in a world where the majority of information we get regarding health and fitness is clouded in marketing. And marketing is all about selling products and services and making sure that you believe that you need this product, this service to achieve your goals. And while doing so, they tend to put forward images that may be somewhat unrealistic and in some cases simply unattainable with relationship to the products that are being sold or services that are coming forward. So many see those and they say, well, I'll never look like that. I'm not going to use it. Or they say, I'm going to try to look like that. They attempt to emulate the person or people who they see in those ads or the people on social media who are promoting a particular diet training program and they get to a point where they realize that's simply not going to happen. Unfortunately, we don't have a society that's built on the idea that you yourself are special, that you have a body and every single person who you look up to at one point didn't necessarily have that body. Some of them had to work really, really hard to get there. And as a natural lifetime drug-free athlete, and having worked with so many other lifetime drug-free athletes, I can tell you for a fact that it's very difficult to see someone and figure out exactly what they will look like after five or 10 years of serious training. What's important is that you put in the time that you give yourself an opportunity to see what it is that you can really do. I always give the story of my own training. I started off at 125 pounds at six feet tall. And my first day in the gym, when I was asked what I wanted to do by the instructor, and I said I wanted to be a bodybuilder, they said it was impossible because I was simply too skinny. I didn't have the physique. I didn't have much of anything narrow shoulders, tiny arms, no legs whatsoever, not much in the way of muscle tone or muscularity. So they didn't think that I would be a good fit for bodybuilding. But I persisted. And because I persisted, I was able to see that I actually did have the ability to become a bodybuilder. Now, whether or not I have good genetics or not is questionable because a lot of people who started off with me were far more um, advanced over time than I was because I was naturally extremely skinny. But just like a marathon, no one really cares where you started. What they care about is how you finish. 
And the same applies to genetics. No one cares what you looked like when you first started off. It's nice to have the before and after picture. But what really matters to you and to everybody else, more or less, is the work you put in and what you're able to achieve. And here's the important thing. In all my years of working with so many people, I've never seen anyone put in that five years of eating properly and training hard, coming back and not looking spectacular. True, not everyone can get to a point where they can end up on a bodybuilding, bikini, figure, or physique stage, but that's something that isn't necessarily the goal of most people. Most people just want to look like if they wanted to do a competition that maybe it could be something they could consider somewhere down the line, but most people just want to look a little bit better. And even so, those people who want to look a little bit better, a lot of them could actually go on to be competitors if they put in a good five years. Now, the importance of believing in yourself. There are so many supplement companies out there. There are so many products out there. There's so much in the way of people who use drugs out there. As a natural athlete, it's important to understand that the road ahead of you is a hard one and a long one. It's going to take a lot of time to get to see that much in terms of return. But what's important is you're going to feel better. Not only are you going to look better, you're going to feel better. What really matters and kind of surpasses the whole idea of genetics isn't so much about looking better, it's about feeling better. If you eat a diet of unprocessed foods and you engage in some form of intense physical activity regularly, and you do that consistently for years, yes, you will look good, but you will not look anywhere near as good as how you're going to feel. And once you get into that flow where your focus is on enjoying the benefits of feeling better, of eating better, of being in a place where you're in a body where you're more or less energized most times throughout the day, you're not easily fatigued, and you also don't suffer from a lot of the health problems that come with poor diet and inactivity. Do that for five years, and genetics no longer really become an issue. But in order to do that, you have to believe in yourself. You have to stop looking left and looking right and looking at those who may be already far ahead from where you are. Very often people look at me and they say, Kevin, you have fantastic genetics. I wish I had your genetics. But what you see in me is literally 32 years later. No one was saying I had great genetics 30 years ago. Even 25 years ago, it was still a little bit questionable. It takes time and you have to put in the time. I was fortunate to have a wonderful number of people around me who believed in me, who said, yes, you need to keep on going because we don't know what it is that you could possibly do. I had fantastic support at a lot of key moments in my life. And what I want to offer to you is my support to you. My support to you is saying, you can do this. It's going to take some time. But if you invest in yourself in a way that we are so used to doing with finances, people have no problem putting money into stocks or investing into a business and expecting a return five years down the line, but we seem to have a problem doing so for ourselves when it comes to our fitness and our health. So I'm asking all of you, believe in yourself. Know that I believe in you. Put in some years, put in some time, and you'd be surprised what you can do. And genetics really won't make much of a difference. Again, I'm Ken Richardson, and thank you so much for tuning in. Bye for now.